Assalamu alaikum to some of you and what's happening to the rest of you? Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say the supplication right quick. Um, I'm going to start by uh, testifying that there's no deity to worship except the law and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace and prayers be to him, is his slave servant and messenger. And I ask this deity of ours to guide our hearts and tongues and hands, I as I speak to you and you as you hear, and to protect us from misleading and being misled, deceiving and being deceived, um, disbelief, poverty, and um, from the evil in ourselves, and from the rejected outcast, the one cast out of the heavens. Now, to get to the point, as I've uploaded my last few videos, uh, I have addressed white supremacy in most of my videos, and, and by extension, I wind up having to address colorism in some of them. And when I did that, and I uploaded the last video, the title of which had colorism, colorism in it, I began to find something. I began to find out just how much we are discussing colorism on social media and on YouTube. It's good, actually. We need to have the discussion. Because all communities around the world have been programmed with colorism. And it wasn't always by colonizers either. Sometimes, some parts of the world had it, like Japan, China, Korea, and India. They had this colorism before they were colonized. Hadn't seen a real white man and they had colorism. And then some people got it from colonization. But um, suffice it to say that, that we need this. And I'm glad to find out that we're discussing this so that we can deprogram ourselves. Not so that we can argue about it and start creating more stereotypes. So I want to give the black community and the Muslim community some advice when we discuss, discuss colorism. Discuss it for the purpose of deprogramming people from this uh, colorism. That's the first thing. Do not create new stereotypes. Um, joke about it if you wish and if that's your talent, that's fine. But if we joke about colorism, like if we put up videos when we joke about the stereotypes, that's fine so long as we do something and that something is to put up a disclaimer. Because there are teenagers and even preteens watching YouTube. There are kids that have YouTube channels, so they can see what we put on. But they're impressionable. If they see that us grown folks are joking about it, they might think that we actually believe it, and if they think we believe it, they may believe it's actually true because we believe it. Well, the grown-ups believe it. it must be true. And if they think that way, then they will fit the stereotypes and then they will grow up and be the stereotypes. If you take a young 11 year old, dark skinned brother, and he sees the stereotypes and, and it's in the form of a joke, but he's impressionable. And he sees this, the video where it's a satire. But the light-skinned brother walks with his girl and somebody says, Oh, you fine as a, a cuss word. What you doing with this old beige N-word? And it slaps the beige dude. And the beige dude is sitting up in a state of trying to make peace and doing everything but fighting back. And just gets slapped around. And he gets up and runs off and leaves the girl. And then, you know, chocolate brother comes by you whistling to my girl and I'm standing right here? No, 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 no. I, I, I didn't even see y'all, man. I'm just talking to my grandma. Man, F that B. Talk to me, dude. Say something. You know, super aggressive. Then that chocolate, beautiful canvas having an 11-year-old, real smart, may think that, okay, the grown-ups believe the stereotype, so it's probably truth. Then he starts acting aggressive. Picking fights. Messing with, you know, light-skinned brothers, thinking that's what he's supposed to do. Then he grows into the stereotype and makes it true. And what if you take an 11-year-old, 
light-skinned fella. And he sees the video and he also is not aware how much of this is simply a joke. There's no disclaimer on it. He wonders if these grown folks actually believe it. Therefore, maybe it's true. And he thinks, you know what? I probably can't fight. I probably can't defend myself. Hell, I... Yeah, I like women, but I can't protect one. I don't know. Maybe I just ain't... Maybe I'm not man enough. Maybe I don't have as much testosterone. And then... He starts thinking even worse than that. And grows into the stereotype. You see? You understand? So what I want us to do is to understand it. First off, discuss it. But when we do the jokes, the comedy skits, we should do them if that's the talent. We just need to put a disclaimer in it. That's all. The kids who can go to YouTube and look up the videos, they can also type. So chances are they can read the disclaimers. We just need to put a disclaimer up. Kids, this is a joke between grown-ups. Don't believe this stuff. It ain't real. Enjoy the video and then go back to real life. Do your homework. And that's all. Now, there is something that I want to tell you grown-ups about um, a term that has been coined recently. When I was growing up, this was an issue and it was known as an issue, but there were no, um, there were no such terms as colorism and light skin privilege. No such terms. So consequently, it took a whole lot longer to say a lot less in order to discuss this issue. Now you've got at least these terms, you know, colorism, light skin privilege, shadism, um, along with other vocabulary words that make it easier to discuss more and say more in less time and with fewer words. That's great. We need that. Uh, but I do want to point out something about light skin privilege that even a lot of light skin black folks don't know. Now, I said in a previous video that when white people grant light skin privilege, they could do it for... Uh, one or two reasons. One is always subconscious, generally speaking, and the other one could be conscious or subconscious, but the effect is the same, and that in both cases it comes with a price. It is not designed to actually favor one over the other. It is simply designed to break, to, to divide the ranks with uh, feelings of being special on one side and resentment on the other. I mentioned that in the last one. But this time, I want to mention something else about light skin privilege. And I'm going to talk about the light skin privilege that comes from within the black community. The light skin privilege granted by whites does exist, but like I said, it's offset by the price for which they were granted. Colin Kaepernick refused to pay that price. They're going to rescind it. And we see he's being whiteballed. We see what's happening. Um, but for the light skin privilege that comes from within the black community. That is also real, and it is uh, largely due to just you know brainwashing because we're mentally broken and brainwashed, but as real as light skin privilege is, the price that black people make, all black people pay. The price that the black community extracts from all of its members in terms of self-respect and dignity and uh, self-love. The negativity that the black community inflicts upon all of its members definitely outweighs, definitely offsets light skin privilege and puts it back into the negative. So I'm not denying it exists, it does exist. But the price puts it into the negative. And I'm going to tell you this, when I say the price puts it into the negative, I'm not sitting up here and saying a dark-skinned black folk got it easy in the black community. The black community does not allow any of us to have it easy coming up. That's the truth of the matter. And for the perception of light-skinned privilege, light-skinned people have to pay a heavy price that offsets it. And if there is a perception of dark-skinned privilege, the black community will increase the price that black folks are black that darker skinned people already have to pay, putting the privilege again right back into the negative. Ain't none of us getting off the hook easy in the black community. If you were in the middle, you might have it a tad bit easier. Just being in the middle, 
at least you may not catch hell for your complexion, but there's still other things that we, we practice saying to each other to always, we practice belittling each other. So if you're in the middle in terms of complexion, but there's anything else that's not perfect about you, you're gonna be ripped on jokingly and seriously about whatever it is. You don't have a car, you're gonna be insulted about that. You get laid off, you get insulted about that. Nigga, you ain't save up no money, how could I? Had a job for three months and then they laid me off. Nigga, you can't keep a job. You're responsible. You ain't nothing. Don't say it's, don't say they laid you off because you black. Yeah, but they laid off everybody that was black. Oh, nigga, you just say anything. You see, that that's how we tear each other down. And therefore, I just want us to um, discuss colorism. Light skin privilege, light skin pain, dark skin privilege, dark skin pain. I just want us to, color, to cover these issues. And I don't fully know everything about uh, the pain or the privilege that is reserved for dark skin black folks. I don't fully know what they are. I let darker folks tell us. I know some of the privileges um, for light skin folks and they really don't exist. There are things that light-skinned people cannot say, and they're true, but we're not allowed to say them. Uh, there are um, stereotypes associated with us, and they are readily accepted even by adults. Um, there are things that are being said about dark-skinned women, and when these things are said, these men who say them are corrected so that they know it's not all right to go dog and dark skinned women like that. Um, so these things are still being said, but they're also being met with a resistance. The things that are being said about light skinned men are not being met with a resistance. Nobody is being chastised for saying light skinned men are soft. They ain't thugs. Uh, they ain't scaring nobody. I mean, they ain't even man enough to, to, to be scary, let alone they ain't thugs that, that you know, they um, just not men. And even in the context of comedy, nobody's actually being uh, corrected for this. Now, one of the ways that I know is that, um, let's say that there is a comedy show as an example. If a comedian starts on light-skinned folks, the comedian is allowed to go on for the whole skit talking about that the whole act and nobody's going to censor him it's jokes but nobody's going to say yeah but you repeated it I mean it wasn't even funny after you just kept talking about it for seven minutes straight and didn't joke about any other subject you know it, it, it's so okay to bash light skinned men at this point that a, that a comedian could do it not even be funny and, and like beat a dead horse and nobody would say anything <laughs> that's the difference if a comedian gets up and starts trashing dark-skinned women, then right off the bat, some people are going to say that's not cool, let alone if he's not funny or she's not funny and continues beating a dead horse, meaning they keep, you know, they spend too much time on that one topic. They're just not going to be, um, they're not going to be allowed to get away with it People aren't going to say, okay, you know what, that, that, that's funny. It's not nice, but it's funny. But well, light-skinned brother ain't even going to say it's not nice when, when light-skinned brothers become the victims. So there's a backlash right now against light-skinned men. And um, I wouldn't say that it's always a hatred, but there's definitely an anger. Such, I mean, to the point that there are men who are light skinned and they've got other recessive traits and they will tell you I cannot date or marry a black woman they don't say light skin or, or dark skin they say I cannot date or marry a black woman not because I don't like them but because they're not gonna have me I'm not what they want we ain't what they want that's all it is we're not saying to them we don't want them they're saying to us no you're out by and so that's where the difference comes in 
and they're going to be prices that, that darker skinned women have to pay and prices that darker skinned men have to pay. I'm more familiar with what dark skinned women go through. Uh, I'm not familiar with what dark skinned men are going through in terms of the negativities at this point, but I know they got to be there. I'll let them tell me. I'll let them school us on it. I'll let one of them speak on it. Um, but I do know that bottom line, the community has been um, ripping itself apart over the perceptions of privileges that exceed the actual privilege in real life. This I do know. We need to discuss it. We need to attack to tackle it. We don't need to run from the issue and not talk about it. We just need to be clear on something. We need to each know that we and everybody else is discussing in order to deprogram ourselves, not in order to feed into the problem and to create more stereotypes. No, dark skinned men are not more likely to be thugs. No, they're not automatically better fighters because they're dark. No, they're not uh, less concerned about the women in their lives because they're dark. No, they're not callous and have no emotional empathy for women. No, um, dark-skinned men are not too hard and too cool to send a, a text to their boy, good morning, you all right, everything okay? Or, yeah, man, uh, um, I'll see you later on. You be good, sleep good, good night, man, take care. No, they're not too hard and too cool to be nice to somebody. This is not truth. And it is a dehumanizing stereotype. I mean, it, it's... Um, almost equating them with animals that is really low down human beings in general are animals that's true but to dehumanize uh, dark skinned men for us to do that is nasty lead that to white folks they'll do that they'll dehumanize all of us actually but lead that to them they've already taken care of that we ain't got to turn around and do that stereotypes emasculating light-skinned men um, that's not even befitting of an adult intellect the um, the difference though is this there are stereotypes for black women of different shades I'm not familiar with what all of them are I've only heard a few um, I don't know how old these stereotypes are because I was not allowed to stereotype women at all when I was growing up. It wasn't tolerated for me. If I didn't stereotype them, it still wasn't tolerated. So uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with what they are. I, don't, I only know a few of them. Um, I've heard that some people stereotype dark-skinned women as being um, uh, looser. Um, I don't know how many people actually think that, but uh, I know that I, I didn't miss what they did on that movie Coming to America, where between the two McDowell sisters, the light skinned one uh, was not loose and the darker sister was looser. I did notice that they cast them that way. Um, I noticed that when I was younger, but I, was, I remember I was a kid and I was wondering, did they do that accidentally? or? Uh, or was it something he did on purpose? I mean, was it black folk that made this movie? Well, if it was black folk that made this movie, they probably did it accidentally. I don't think anybody sat up and said, we're going to get the chocolate sister to play the loose girl. And I don't think they did that. But that was foul, though. I remember thinking that. And I've heard some stereotypes about light-skinned women. I've heard a few more, like, you know, they're, they're, they're goofy, or they play games, um, they're lazy, spoiled, uh, that kind of thing. Um, they don't have any um, they don't have any concern for their boyfriends but they love their relatives only and like they, they don't have they really don't love their boyfriends romantically like that um, they take men for granted except for the male relatives those are the only guys they truly love <laughs> um, I've heard stuff like that but you know, I knew that wasn't the case my mom's light-skinned and she loves my dad and she's closer to him than she is even to me though I'm her son so I know that wasn't necessarily real 
but I I'd had I'd heard about that. Um, I had heard that, uh, that that's about as much as I can remember. Um, more demanding. I'd heard about that too. I forgot about that. I'd heard that they were more demanding, higher maintenance. But the difference was this: growing up, stereotypes about women were allowed as jokes, but they were not allowed as like a real, you were not allowed to express the stereotype as though you really believed it. You could only express it if it was a, a, in the form of a joke. If a man stereotype any shade of black women, the guys would say, you sound dumb as hell. You don't even sound like you're as old as you are. You sound like you're eight years old and ain't got no experience. You really believe that, man? I mean, they actually believe that stuff. They actually... Uh, did not did not accept the stuff. They actually believed that if a guy believed the stereotypes for real, he was probably retarded. That was the difference. I did not hear women trash each other for believing stereotypes about black men either way it went, either shade. I did not hear women say, you stupid as all get out. Do you really think that light-skinned men are all stuck up? Do you really think that light-skinned men are all soft or weak or that you really think light-skinned men can't get out there and wash a car? You really think that? You dumb as all get out. I did not hear this. If they said it, if somebody said this, they were allowed to say it. And the ones who did not believe the stereotypes did not defend the men from the ones who believed the stereotypes. That was the difference I saw growing up. It could have been different in other cities. And I admit this, I'm, I'm, I can only tell you about the city in which I grew up. But black folks, discuss the issue, that's great. You're doing the right thing by doing it. Show, you know, give new experiences. And even inform each other of some friends' experiences without giving the names. What do they experience coming up? <clears throat> you know, well this guy was trusted more um, with money. And he really didn't want people to do that, but they trusted him more with money. But uh, they didn't trust him around kids. They thought he might hurt some kid or something. This dude here, they wouldn't trust him with money. But they never felt like he was going to harm any babies, you know. Never felt like that. Uh, or, they, you know, they, they, this guy over here was... Uh, uh, you give give your friends experiences as well, and listen closely when others are giving theirs. Learn something. But there's just one thing I'm asking, and that is, first off, understand that we have number two things I'm asking. First, understand and remember that we've been so hard on each other that we have offset any privilege any one of us might have gotten. And secondly. Put up disclaimers when you make your videos so that any young impressionable uh, viewers can read the disclaimer and know that you're not actually endorsing the stereotypes in real life and that they're not even real. They're just stereotypes. And remind the youth that if they remember that these are adults joking with each other about the stereotypes and, and, and that they should not believe it, then they will not grow up to act it out and make it true later. This is what we need to do. These are the two things I'm asking for. I hope this message has been of benefit. Assalamu alaikum.